Welcome to UA Insiders by AppSumo, a new series of podcasts, interviews, and private events for senior UA leaders at mobile apps. In this episode, our very own Ross interviews Yoan, Head of Digital Marketing at Depop. Yoan comes with a wealth of experience, having headed up Pay Social for Delivery and Performance Marketing at Perk Rocks. So welcome to UA Insiders. This is our first episode, and I'm really excited to introduce Johan Pavi, who is currently at Depop Mm -hmm. uh, and Johan's going to give us an initial introduction about his journey to get there and then talk a little bit more about what he's doing with his team there and hopefully share some insights with everybody. Johan. Cool. Thanks for having me, Ross. Uh, Pleasure uh, to be here. So yeah, no, my name is Johan and uh, I'm currently at Depop, like you said. I'm head of digital marketing at Depop and um, yeah, I've been here for, for a year now um, so still kind of ramping up everything in the team uh, etc I think pretty much before I joined there was little to no digital marketing like strategy so it's been like a very exciting journey so far absolutely now you and I have obviously spoken previously and your journey to get to what you do today has been quite a unique one do you want to tell us a little bit about that yeah, so I um, I joined like the digital world uh, about six years ago. Uh, came from engineering, so I was working in like automotive before that, like suit and tie every day. Yeah, so, yeah, yeah. And I I I got like out of it uh, kind of by just being you know opportunistic and like trying to find something that would um, that I would like to do a bit more um, than working for like very old industry. And uh, yeah, the opportunity came up like to move into an agency at a very like entry level role, uh, account management type role. Um, And I I kind of grew from that and I I made a switch a year year in to to a company uh, called Deliveroo, which kind of uh, like skyrocketed everything for me, uh, kind of going into the deep end uh, very quickly. Um, and there's a similar like uh, journey in between uh, the beginning, like Deliveroo. I went to Perkbox after that, uh, which is like, well known in the UK and now at Depop. Like every time, I kind of came in at a time where it was just starting. Uh, the company was just starting to to invest in digital marketing. Okay. So kind of taking things into almost like you know from scratch and Absolutely. building the team, building the strategies, ramping up the channels, doing the setup, very early setup, yeah. and then, you know, figuring out the next step. And in terms of coming from the agency side and going into these businesses where I guess you've, you've effectively structured the user acquisition or the performance marketing for yeah. these businesses, yeah. from Deliveroo to Depop, yeah. how much have you seen that landscape change or do you think there are still some fundamentals that you need to recognise? So much, like it's, it changed a lot and it still, I think it still needs to change a lot just because the landscape is changing every year, you know, every six months there is like a new big like change or channel or strategy, like something's happening that n- needs, needs you to be like on your toes and like adapt. Um, but from the very early stage, um, of like digital marketing, I think, also because I was focused on social channels at yeah. the time, um, I, I had a very narrow, or kind of a narrow view of what I was doing yeah. versus the whole digital landscape mm-hmm. of what a company could look like across the web and app, etc. So I learned a lot in that period of time as well, in that, in that sphere, in terms of like n- not looking in like silo, but looking at from like an holistic point of view, which is now, which is kind of now what I'm doing at Depop, um, looking after pretty much everything digital from the company, okay. from acquisition to remarketing, testing, branding, like okay. distribution of content, all that stuff to be interlinked. So how do you build your team around that? So if you've obviously looking at from a grounds up perspective, yeah. coming that you've obviously seen where yeah. I think silos can definitely pose challenges. Yeah. I think we've spoken to a number of customers and they've said quite often understanding the ecosystem is more important than just understanding yeah. one part of it. So what's been your approach when it comes to building a team? So the approach has changed, like I said, but the um, I think the best practice up until recently, and it, it might still be the case for, for most companies, I don't know everyone, but um, 
the way I used to see things in the company I worked with was, okay, we're going to have specialists by channels because those channels are like someone old, like, you know, SEO or, um, or PPC, someone new within the social channels, but within social channels, you could break it down by, you know, Facebook, Instagram, Snapchat, TikTok now, you know, like looking at it that way, I recently realized that you don't put, if you build your team like that, there could be some, and I'm still experimenting on that, but it could be some issue in people looking at their channel in isolation. And then if you add on top of that the issue of attribution and multi-touch attribution, people are actually not optimizing for the business, they're optimizing for the channel, um, which could be actually not really beneficial. It could be a lot of like wastage within doing that. So. The approach that I have right now is why not building teams around markets, around countries, okay. especially for companies that run multiple countries, to work in like almost mini startups where you can make your own decision, not from a channel point of view, but holistically for a market and making sure that you're going the right direction, you're getting the results together rather than in, in separation. And I guess for you as head of digital, you feel it's important um, to look at those channels side by side so that yeah. you know that there's a representative few when it comes to that. Yeah. So in terms of the, the metrics and the focus, do you feel that there's also been an evolution from your delivery to, to Depop days? You know, are you still driving the same metrics? And a lot of people right now, certainly from my experience in talking to them, um, there's a, I guess, not a saturation per se, but a maturity happening in terms of the aggressive UA. Yeah. user acquisition, um, so a lot more about LTVs, a lot more about, you know, uh, ROI. Yeah. It, there seems to be a kind of evolution happening that people have gone, yeah. the market's got to a point, yeah. we need to consolidate and yeah. start to actually focus also on what we have. Yeah, it's interesting. I think there's like two, two interesting things within that is, yes, companies in the past five years have become like more sophisticated. Right now, at Depop, we definitely look into LTV, mm. and we, 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 we've we done some, some great work on that, um, to optimize from a very early stage uh, campaign to already know kind of, you know, the payback that we're gonna get from the users we, we com coming through. Um, but at the same time, there's a paradox, I think, in this, uh, which is linked to the big topic of like incrementality. Mm which is like the big buzzword in, 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 in startups and, and UA efficiency and like, you know, are we actually driving incremental um, results to the business? I think by doing that and relying too much on the data, because yeah. data can say whatever, whatever you want it to say, you know, depending on how you look at it. And I think sometimes you get to the situation where you will make a decision which could be let's just never run ads on Instagram because it doesn't work for our business. Sure. And I think when you get to that extreme, I think it's detrimental to the, to the business because everyone's on Instagram 30 times a day, sure. depending on the audience that you're trying to target. So maybe the issue is not, is it working or not for our business? It's like, it should work. Let's just make it work and let's put the testing and the teams that are uh, adequate to actually make it work. Maybe it's the creative is not strong enough. Maybe the audiences you're trying to target within that testing period is not the, the right one. Like there is a lot of other parameters that comes into play before, you know, saying, you know, it's a waste of money or we should turn things off. You know what I mean? Yeah, absolutely. So like when you're going and we, it's really interesting right now. I think we see the dominance, the continued dominance of Facebook and Google. Yeah. within the performance marketing space specifically. But certainly an increase in demand about uh, adding channels, mm -hmm. making or testing channels. Yeah. But I think you know to test channels in the most effective way, mm -hmm. your consideration within Depop is to make sure that there's, a, there's quite a length of testing takes place yeah. as opposed to we test once and then exactly. effectively nothing's come exactly. of it. Yeah. And in terms of obviously supporting that journey, we, we all face demands from our businesses ultimately, right, there's, there's, there's a metric on all of us. So how do, you, how do you manage that with your team and then obviously with your wider Depop business? Yeah. Do you feel that you've got the, the, the need 
for Bayern at a wider level? Yeah, 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 definitely. The, uh, I think be because of the nature of digital marketing, the getting the buy-in from the senior people, which are most of the time from an older generation, that's just the, the nature of where we are right now between the Gen Zs, the millennials, etc. Um, there's always a level of buy-in that could be harder or easier depending on the level of marketing sophistication that the senior people have. Um, but I think it's very important to, yeah, like you said, put the, the right level of investment into the channels that are available out there to promote your business. Uh, so yes, Facebook, Instagram, Google will be like the big ones that would be probably the easiest one to get results from because of the scale. But you can't have a blank, like a blanket approach and just, for example, build like one concept of video and put it everywhere. And obviously it's not going to work because every channel is different, etc. So it's about how you build your teams. So get the buy-in to build your teams in a way that will allow you to scale in all of the channels. Yeah. Uh, so you don't put all your eggs in the same basket. Yeah. Um, so there's, a, there's definitely like a level of sophistication in the creative output you're, you're putting out. Um, and that's, a, that's another big discussion, you know, the creative team within companies, if you're doing everything in house, historically have not been built for digital. No. And in the past five years, things have changed. The volume of content that you need to put out needs to be like 10, 20 X what you think you, you, you need to put. So you need more people. Yeah. And either it's external or internal, you need to put the volume to see what works. Um, and so it's yeah. interesting because the creative is such a such a topic we see a lot about at the moment. And um, I'm sure you've seen them. There's a lot of people talking about, you know, is user acquisition dead? Yeah. And a lot of people are saying, you know, in its current form, it's less about the death of user acquisition, it's more about the evolution. Yeah. And they refer to things such as, you know, technology and machine learning kind of taking a lot of the kind of the, the transactional aspects of someone's yeah. role and the need for these people to move into creative. Now, obviously, knowing you from our previous discussions, I know creative plays a big part of your, your yeah, psyche yeah, and how you approach yeah. things. Do, do you agree with those statements? Do you think that user acquisition has a need to move to creative, or do you think that that, that daily programmatic work still is needing to be owned by us? I think it depends on the level of um, what's the objective, you know? Like, I think there's a level of sophistication you can get. Also, it depends on your business and what you're doing, but when you're doing remarketing or very low, uh, low, low type of you know, activity, you can have soft sophistication and like feed and product feed and things like that that will like make the automation easier. And in that way, that, that should be efficient because you're showing people what they potentially search for already or put in a basket or whatever. Um, but what's, I think what's most interesting for me is what happens at the top of the funnel. Mm. And that's where it's hard to call it user acquisition because maybe the KPI will be different, but that's what's gonna fuel whatever else is happening at the bottom. And I think everyone is, a, a lot of people are focused at the bottom of the funnel and like the sophistication of the tech and AI and things like that. Um, but not, I don't hear a lot of people talking about creativity at the top and the message and the content that is being put out as a first touch point or the first few touch points that you're going to see from a brand. Yeah. Um, that's what will be, is going to be very important in whatever happened next. And if you're doing too much of the bottom then and not spending enough at the, at the top, then maybe that's where the issue is. Absolutely. You know? And in terms of you, I mean, your background obviously has been predominantly within the, within the consumer direct space. We've kind of, I guess, historically we recognise that uh, a lot of mobile gaming companies uh, drove a lot of very successful uh, user acquisition strategies. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They've grown substantially. They've created some robust business models around that. Mm -hmm. On a personal level, have you taken any learnings or do you connect with that space in any way to bring across any of those or do you see it entirely different? I think for now, I, th I haven't spent enough time looking at, uh, so specifically gaming, yeah. Say, yeah. Um, I think I probably should. Um, but from what I'm seeing, and I might be wrong, it's really focused on, you know, like AV, UA. Um, Very much volume driven. Volume yeah. Driven rather than brand. I think it's just the, the, the nature of the business, right? It's like you're turning games 
fairly frequently mm -hmm. that you need to like squeeze the much out of in a short period of time oh, yeah, and then the in out the like in app kind of gamification kicks in right Absolutely. so i feel like i'm really like in a totally different like world um but yeah i think it's interesting there could be some crossover i don't really yeah i don't really know yeah, I think it's interesting. Right? I think from looking at an outsider's point of view of consumer development versus gaming, yeah. I think there's an investment on your part to make sure that people are invested in your brand and the journey of your brand yeah. and becoming advocates and driving the advocacy. Whereas, as you see, gamification is maybe a little bit, a little bit yeah. more immediate. Thinking back to kind of, I guess, on a on a wider level, um, I shared with you very briefly earlier on. Um, Statistics are kind of always flying around our industry. People who have opinions, of course, we're, we're expressing one in this today. Um, marketing efficiency, I love this term because it's just like, where do you stop with that conversation? Um, and I personally wanted to explore that and kind of ask obviously some questions on that. Yeah. And when you actually uh, Google the word efficient, it gives you a dictionary definition of two things. The first one it tells you about is systems and machines and the efficiency of those. And the second one is about people and ultimately the efficiency of those. Yeah. And when I think about modern day performance marketing, it's obviously completely relevant to the fact that we're both using systems, machines, but ultimately the majority of time those have been driven by people. Mm -hmm. So when you're blending two things to make it efficient, what's your kind of experience with that? And actually, where do you see that evolving to, if at all? Yeah, so I think I, touch, I touched upon like, this kind of like topics already. It's down to like, so the team part is all about what I said around, like how do you build your team around channel specific or by country and then they're uh, them having like a holistic view of across multiple channels. So then they're, dr they're being driven by the right KPI, which is the business rather than the, a specific channel. Absolutely. That's, that's probably like one thing on, on the team side. Um, what I would say as well is investing in the team and like human is always going to be for me better in terms of, you know, marketing is caring and the level of care that you can put into looking at your campaigns mm. in a sense of like just social listening, you know, like what do people say that campaign that is working very well that we have a thousand comments on, do you, did we actually read the comments mm. to actually go and inform what we're going to do next, you know, like that. For now, I think that's going to be like, you know, human, like people team led. Um, I'm trying to like do, do some of that. And on the, the kind of tech side, it's about having, for me, especially in this, the phase where I start usually in companies or like Adipop is like having a, a fair level of sophistication, but I'm not too worried about having everything like tech optimized and like data optimized from the very beginning, otherwise you never do anything. Absolutely. If you're trying to like control the outcome too much before you even start, you, you, you won't do anything. So it's about having like a minimum setup that works. So, you know, for example, in our case, especially like recently working with you guys, it's about having, you know, all our channels um, centralized into obviously our MMP and then having a platform to visualize that data in a consumable way on a day, daily, weekly, monthly basis to do our reporting on. Um, and do you find that beneficial across your team? I mean, do you find that bringing the guys together and showing them kind of, I guess, each other side by side yeah. is, is quite compelling? Do you find that that yeah. kind of creates a certain behavior and a demand within the team? Yeah, I think so. I think uh, what, what that brings is very interesting discussions, which we're gonna start having actually within the team on a weekly basis where we can actually drill down into a country or a channel mm. without pinpointing at one person responsible for it. It's a team, like it would be more like a team effort. Absolutely. So like if we do a focus uh, for the US, for example, yeah. we can in an hour quickly like go through all the main channels that we've got and everyone can have a point of view on like, oh, maybe you know, I'm doing this in the UK, maybe we should try that. And then, you know, like more uh, cross like sharing um, experiences and results within the team. I think that's, that's beneficial. Absolutely. And in terms of looking out into the marketplace within your team, 
do you guys, I guess, mirror or reflect any other organisations that you see are doing it right? You know, you're like, actually those guys have nailed it. Or do you personally feel that it's about building a kind of independent marketing journey? For now, I think I'm building my own like journey. Um, I look, I look at different like marketing people. Yeah, you know they are very present on like LinkedIn and, and YouTube and stuff for my own personal like sake. But I don't necessarily look at companies who've uh, done it the way I want to do it. I think what's interesting is like there's still a, a big gap into how you how you can build that structure and that whether like from a, either from a tech point of view or from a, a people point of view, sure. um, because the company who are very successful today they've built their team maybe five to ten years ago um, in various verticals you know travel e-commerce gaming etc. and the way the teams are built now. The reality is that the bigger the company is, the harder it is to change it. And they're kind of, it's easy to be stuck in the way you build it the in the first place. Absolutely. So I'm really cautious of that and not just to replicate a model that everyone's doing or everyone has done. And, you know, some companies have a digital marketing team of like, you know, 50, 60, 70 people. True. And they're built a certain way. And maybe some of them are built in the way that I'm talking about. I don't know, like I don't know all of them, but that's that's why I'm like kind of trying to do my own thing based on what I'm seeing and what I think could be the most beneficial for the business. Like that's the, the, the key, right? The business outcome. In terms of your journey there, so coming in user acquisition, I guess, specifically yeah. um, from a, a company level, so delivery to, to Depop. Yeah. Is there something you can pinpoint as the single biggest change? In that journey in terms of the marketplace we know obviously that there's been a, a dominant adoption you know of mobile use mm -hmm. we can see for example the you know recent report um, shows us that the spend yeah. to the use case is matching now for the first time uh, yeah. and historically but for you is there something that stands out in your mind that when you think back through your journey that what we did then maybe we do or we don't do now yeah yeah for sure I think uh, yeah the, the mobile uh, shift in the past five, six years, I've definitely seen it like today, 99% to 100% of the marketing spend we have is on, is on, is on mobile app. Um, and interestingly at Deliveroo, it was not the case, you know, it was, uh, it was very web driven as well, you know, so, um, so that's, that's really interesting actually. I, I, I don't think about it that much, but it's, it's true that that was the case, you know, I can't remember the proportions, but there was definitely a, a significant amount of web-led marketing activities from from a UA point of view, you know, like uh, going into mobile web and web and then and an app. Whereas now is at Depop is really really app driven. But interestingly, we're now we're talking about okay, how can we bring a little bit of web or mobile web into it to just again it's a matter of like diversifying um, and putting a bit less pressure into the channels that we are like yeah, using. Don't just have one single yeah, point exactly, of failure, yeah. right? Great, so Johan, um, one of the things, and we've touched on this a little bit in the past, and again, I like to reference some of the materials that I've been reading around, um, and probably both important for established app businesses, but also businesses coming into the space, are things like ASO or App Store optimization. So how much does that play a part in your team's structure and kind of what, what's your own experiences within that? Yeah, so that's, yeah, that's an interesting one. I, I kind of started, yeah, I started it when I joined at Depop and even though the company was already like to a certain like uh, scale. So that's, that tells you how, how new it is for, for I guess, most companies. Um, right now, it doesn't have a specific person in the team. So it's we externalize it uh, to get the expertise and kind of link it with uh, ASA. So, you know, Apple search ads. Um, but I feel like this is probably the most interesting kind of new-ish uh, channel to like explore in terms of testing and um, the outcome, uh, the outcome of it. You know, I think when you think about it, especially when you do when you run like mostly app install activity, everything you drive comes into that one page, and having done like a lot of landing page optimization at my time at Powerbox which was like lead driven, you know, 
it's very frustrating when you've only got one page that you can't really do much with, you know? There's a bit more flexibility on, on Google Play, but on, on the App Store, the only really th few things you can change, if you're not doing anything with it, like, I think that's a shame, because, you know, like I said, you could be spending a lot of money driving so many people to that one or two, you know, store, store pages. So, yeah, I think that's a very interesting one, but the, 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 the kind of internal uh, buy-ins as well is very interesting because who owns that yeah. App Store page, you know, designs and, and title and stuff. And at Depop, we're finding this, uh, and I, I guess it's the, the similar situation for, for a lot of companies, especially if you're very established, is like, um, is it brand marketing? Is it a brand page? Is it product, you know, because they're releasing the app every every week or two or depending on the cadence? Or is it a performance marketing channel? And right now, I'm, I'm trying to drive it through as a performance marketing channel, but there is definitely like a, 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 a sync to be to be made within companies within that to know where ASO yeah. sits. And on top of that, ASA on, 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 on Apple. And do you feel that we're at a place, I mean, look, we, we've talked already a little bit about the marketplace is maturing. I think people are starting to recognise that there's a, there's a fundamental stack, tech stack that's kind of needed. There's a, a behaviour or a skill set within performance marketers that we're looking for and, and creative is obviously a big aspect of that from there. Do you feel that maybe part of that kind of next maturity of market is at almost at a business level where departmentally and functionality we're having to start to learn about who owns what and how we collaborate differently as part of this kind of new cycle of, of development? I'm not sure I understood the question. <laughs> Can so you it's, that? Yeah, it's more like um, it's about ownership, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So businesses, they're, they're maturing, right? Yeah. So UAs matured from being you know tech focused or, or numbers focused to yeah. you guys creative focused. But now businesses are almost like yeah. performance marketing drives such, obviously, of our revenues. Yeah. You know, we know businesses that are given all carte blanche. Yeah. Like they're given everything, right, in terms of you drive everything. Yeah. Whereas obviously other businesses, and you're alluding to it, you're there. Whereas other departments, it's always been theirs. Yeah. Yeah. So now the sudden idea of having to relinquish it or be involved definitely from it yeah. seems to be resistant. Yeah, yeah. So it's, it's, it comes down to like getting the buy-in and like communicating on why we, we would do things we were not doing before. Yeah, absolutely. Um, and I think it's about saying, you know, we're testing. We don't know what we don't know. And a lot of time ASO is something that is completely untouched sure. for some brand, especially outside of gaming. Um, or is very light touch. Like every, we'll just update it every six months, you yeah. know, like every year. So it's, it's just about bringing that new framework and bringing people on that journey a little bit, um, and I'm learning like internally and as well in, in, in doing that instead of like just you know doing things on, on the side and, and then everyone realizes there's a new app title, <laughs> you know. So it's like uh, bring them yeah. all together, yeah, 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 yeah. and then get the learnings from it from whatever we can measure, you know. And I, that's another issue with yeah. App Store optimization is like what is the incrementality again to that, you know, Absolutely. in terms of uh, uh, you know, App Store, especially when you have a lot of UA in the back, you know, that doing a lot of the heavy lifting, of you're not going to turn everything off to see your baseline and then see your baseline move when you do your ASO. So that, that's not really a reality. So there's also like a sophistication to be made on like the reporting of it and movements in the, you know, keywords, top three kind of, kind of thing, Absolutely. you know? Yeah. And obviously when we talk about technology, we talked a bit about tech stack, we mentioned MMPs. Yeah. We all kind of, there is, I guess when you get to a point, there's, there's a need to use them. Um, we touched a little bit on them with fraud and so on and so forth. You Deliveroo, Perkbox, yeah. now Depop. You're experiencing that place in terms of how they've changed, how they are building the support structure around business models. What's your what's your experience and your feelings on those things? I think, so I think they're definitely like a necessity yeah. today to yeah. measure like cross-channel and like kind of did you cross-channel cross your what's coming in from, from an app point of view. Um, the evolution of what I've seen from my delivery there is with, which at that time I had a more narrow uh, kind of kind of role um, was that we were still very relying on the channel, the native channel for okay. reporting, which 
you know, it's also a big issue because there's a lot of like double counting and attribution and all that stuff. So I feel like we 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 moved in the right direction, or I moved in the right direction. But there is a, there is so much more that needs to be done, and you know, like the complexity of a, someone's journey into discovering a brand or an app or whatever, um, from web to app. The mix of both. Uh, I think I think there is still, yeah, a lot of progress to be made on like the measurement side of things. And I know that most MMT MMP of work are working on on those topics. You Absolutely. know, web app, multi touch, uh, what we touch upon like fraud as well. Um, so yeah, it's just I think it's just about um, keeping in touch with what they're working on and trying to get it at the right time when it's ready, you know. So communication and community yeah. kind of to keeping keeping yeah. in dialogue. But at the base, like it's about, you know, tracking what's comes coming in, in terms of install in the most accurate way possible. Um, making sure that you're not at the base, you know, double counting yeah. what Facebook tells you versus what Google tells you or Snapchat, you know, like that's 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 always gonna be true. Absolutely. And in terms of just as we summarize and kinda of close up on today. Is there anything specifically that you feel that we should put out there for the UE insiders and for the people watching this video? Is there any any topics or any kind of big picture stuff that you want to kind of share with us before we, we finish up? Um, I think for me the biggest topic right now in, in my world is uh, creative and putting back the creativity into what we do. Yeah. Um, I think in the past few years because of the level of sophistication of each of the channels and the level of data that we get access uh, to from like what we're doing, we kind of moved away from, wait, what are we actually like saying to people or, you know, is this logic? Are we listening to what they say back to us? And uh, are we testing enough messaging to, you know, the level of targeting that we have in hand? Yeah. Um, so I feel like the marketing, like the, the tech side of things, is almost a given yeah. to anyone who's done it for a few years. But the creative side is the, is the delta Absolutely. that would make a campaign like go really, really well or just be like, meh. So the tech can tell you the numbers, but the people can tell you what the numbers actually mean yeah. in a nutshell. Yeah. Brilliant. Well, Johan, look, it's been a real pleasure having you. Thank you very much thank for coming you. along and being part of our kind of Made in UAE Insiders. Um, we we'll look forward to uh, speaking with you again. Thanks for listening. If you like what you hear, then give us a like, or if you want to attend one of our private dinners that we're hosting for UA leaders all around the world, then give us an email at uainsiders at appsumer.io.